Um, yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll follow the other question, which is from Dorothy asking asking for a deep relaxation. So um, yeah, let's do that. You can lie down if you choose. Um, I'm, I'm going to sit because I find it quite relaxing to sit these days. And hmm. you take a breath, you let it go, and you uh, turn up to this present, to this moment. And I, I have this um, little poem that um, I use to actually guide people through practice. It's the first poem, though, it's, uh, and it's the one that um, invites an absence of complication in the thinking. It invites a, a presence, to direct presence to what is, uh, without ambition, without... Um, yes. Invites a letting go. So, uh, when, when you feel comfortable, see if you can follow these instructions. So, from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from your touch. Make it even, make it kind. And then just ground and breathe. Until you find a central place, a sacred space that lives at the center of all touch and lives at the center of all space. And this is a place where you can just let go. So from here, in this moment, Deepest relaxation, you see, is when we can be present. And this is um, relaxation with presence is different from sleep. It makes it uh, shavasana. So from here, just as you are. So we're not trying to fix anything. And that's often something that is um, missed when we settle ourselves into relaxation. We tend to organize things so that um, some ambition is fulfilled. Like I want to, inverted commas, open my lower back, like I want my neck to be longer. So we lay down and we stretch and we hang out there, waiting for something to change. No. So from here, just as you are, it's important that you arrive just as you are. Without the usual, without without the fidget, without the change, without the shift into something you feel you should be in. And the way to monitor that is through comfort, through 
the ability to let go, to feel supported as you do so. And that brings me to the next line. If you are to feel supported, then you need to be relating to your contact directly. So, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from your touch. And here's the adjustment if you need one. Make it even. Make it equal. Make it even. So although that might invite some activity, it's activity that will lead to more support. And the more supported you feel, the more you can let go. Make it even. Make it even, make it kind. So that clears up the intention. You know, the, the, the instruction is to be with your touch, to support yourself, but make it kind, as in the quality of your contact, the quality of your engagement <coughs> with the world around you is, will be directly reflected in the body's um, own relationships with itself. So if you, if you have the quality of kindness in your touch, as if the thing that you're touching is something you wish to be kind to, as well as looking for the kindness of supporting yourself from this equal touch, this even touch. Make it equal, make it kind. If you follow those instructions, then um, you'll be moving towards a more, more of a homeostatic state, more of a balanced state of support. And then the only thing to do is to allow yourself and, and allow what you, what you are doing to breathe. So from here, just as you are, becoming quiet and present, listen from your touch. Make it even, make it kind, then just ground and breathe. until you find a central place. Having taken your attention to <coughs> your relationship to the world around you through contact and through breath, having made it even, having found the kindness in your um, relationships, when the breath is an expression of your actions, then you are, you be, you are in this rhythmic relationship to the world <coughs> that is following the rhythms, the ebbs and flows of the, the breath and other things. So that's your practice, is to get skilled at following those rhythms. You ground and breathe. And within those rhythms, if all conditions of support and kindness and other things remain in place through a full cycle of the breath, then something will change. And what will change will be you. It'll be something in the centre of you. And uh, if we were actively engaging with postures, um, 
you know, like a handstand dog pose or whatever. If you follow the instructions, um, if you ground and breathe until you find, when you release the breath within that cycle, something in the center will very literally, very, very directly kick in until you find that central place. And it's when you come back to the center of what you're doing, but from your relationship to the world around you, which is the sort of basis of my work, this um, envirosomatic integration idea. By being with your touch, by being kind, and by practicing through the breath, so you're in space as well. When those relationships harmonize through a full cycle of the breath, the outcome is a very literal centering. So you get to you get to move towards the 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 yoga of it, the answer, the center of your being. In a in a very literal sense, in a very a physical sense, so that your experience starts to be um, a two-way relationship between the center of your being and the world around you, as opposed to surface reactions and retractions and, and that sort of thing. And it, and it's where everything turns itself on its head. It's where the yoga begins. until you find that central place and it's at the center of all touch so when you when you engage to make your touch even to make it kind when you found that equality the outcome will be an emptying towards the center and I'm talking literally as in the core of the body will come together as the diaphragm ascends with the release of the breath it's the center of all touch. It's the center of all space. When your when your contact, your your when your relationship to the earth um, allows you to expand in space in all directions with the with the arrival of the breath. When you release the breath, it's not a collapse from space. It's an inward release. And it brings you into your spine if you remain in relationship to space it brings you into the center of the spine and the center of opening within the spine to my experience is the spine behind the heart the center of the thoracic spine as in that's the place that we meet heaven and earth from that's the place that we expand out into space from that's also the place that we meet the earth from. And so, from here, just as you are, quiet and present, listening from your touch, make it even and kind and ground and breathe until you find a central place, a central, a sacred space. And it's the center of all touch, and it's the center of all space. And this is a place where you can just let go. Because hmm. when you do, when you can release into the center of the spine behind the heart, and it becomes the center of opening, then you simply let go, and the outcome is a release of your weight into your touch and a release through space release into the heavens above and the space all around you which um, I believe is kind of one of the definitions of the um, Scaravelli inspired experience I suppose you, you let go and there's a wave there's a, there's a dance there's a, you know you let go into the <clears throat> outcome that you desire, which on a philosophical level I think resonates with uh, most ideas out there. 
So, so that's my poem. It, it's uh, if that was relaxing, then fantastic. <laughs> and then it's done the job of relaxing you. It's also a practical guide of how to approach all postures. Um, you might need to uh, invite a slightly sterner voice or a stronger voice for stronger postures. You know? um, but essentially, the the the, the the how to, the how to get into the yoga of it is the same, whatever you're doing. It's just, it's, it can be more challenging in certain situations, that's all. And the general outcome, the general idea is to be able to let go, which is relaxing. So, um, I hope that's, I hope that was useful in answering your question, Dorothy. Um, good, yeah, uh, that'll do for me, uh, from me today. Uh, what have I got going on? Let's see, I've got a... Um, coming up to London, beginning of March. I'm, I'm going to have my um, little retreat uh, this coming week. I may or may not have a day off from from Yoga Solutions next week. I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, this is this week is the last week of my uh, proprioceptive course, so and I'm long overdue my yearly retreat. So I think um, yeah, next week I will have off. That's for sure. And uh, so I will be back with Yoga Solutions the week after, which is the third of March, and then um, I think that's right. Maybe we'll see. Um, uh, I'm up in London doing um, doing a day in London of one-to-ones on, on Wednesday the 18th of March and then on 29th of March I'm in Twickenham doing a, a workshop for the Heart Twickenham crew. Do come along. Other than that, uh, there's my online courses. I, I'll be... I'll be um, Kicking off the next one, probably in April, I'd imagine, once I put it together, it's going to be a long one, longer one. It's a 12-week course because it's about all the uh, relationships between parts of the body. Uh, and I'll do a 12-week course on mapping out <laughs> all of the major structures and how they relate to each other in natural movement, um, on the, you know, full ranges of natural movement. So um, if you're interested in that, drop me a line and I'll put you on the list. Um, it'll take me a little while to um, put that together. Uh, but yes, I think that will be beginning in, in April. And then the last weekend in May, I shall be in Cyprus at the lovely Soul Space venue. And uh, yes, Rachel has uh, invited me to come and teach there. It's a long weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, you can book individual sessions and of course you can um, book to stay at the place uh, um, and it's, uh, it's the, on the coast in, uh, near Larnaca in um, Cyprus so that will be quite an event so I look forward to seeing you there or uh, on online oh yes I'm, I'm going to be um, before long I'm going to open up my weekly sessions um, for drop-in uh, if you're interested and um, when I do it, I might make it possible for people to uh, drop in once for free, just to try it out, because it's quite um, it's quite a phenom phenomenal kind of class. It's uh, it's not like any other class you go to. It's a bit like Yoga Solutions in that um, I have a group of people on screen. They turn up and I say, "What would you like?" and um, and I go ahead, and it's, it's a very it's, it's a very pleasurable class for me because I can respond directly to those in front of me, which I always enjoy, and um, offer solutions. So um, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll open it up for drop-in. Obviously, um, you can probably do the first one for free if I can work out how to do that. Um, and but uh, yeah, if you're booking it drop-in, it'll be more expensive than if you book book it as a regular thing. So. Um, but so uh, yeah, do do give it a go when I put the link up and um, put that on offer. So uh, yeah, so they they are on Tuesdays. There's one directly well soon after this uh, Yoga Solutions class online. Um, it's at 11:30 on a Tuesday, and there's another one in the evening at 6:30 p.m. 
same uh, in, on Tuesday, both on Tuesday, and you can come to either or both if you sign up. Okay, so um, yes, that, that's all from me. Uh, I shall say goodbye for now, um, and I'll probably see you in a week or two, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, um, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off. Lots of love to you all. Bye now.